This is a presentation of RBT Entertainment. This isn't about the dead, it's about the living. It's about my mother. It's about my sister. It's about my wife. It's about the 14 years it took me to go from undesirable to un-goddamn deniable. You know, they say all men are created equal, but you look at me and you look at Small Joe, and you can see that statement is not true. Because I'm better than you, and you know it. In the back, there are men and women Seasoned professionals, dues paid in full, gunning to be the best. I'll always light the way, and all you have to do is let me in. Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. <laughs> the cream of the crop. Nobody does it better. Hey, hi, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the WrestleCast, presented by RBT Entertainment on Podomatic, Spotify, YouTube, and wherever else you may find this fine audio recording and live on RBT Entertainment's official Twitch.tv channel. We talk about professional wrestling, both in the mainstream and the independent scene. My name is Matty J. That is TWK. Hello, I'm TWK, and thanks to co-worker Randy, I got myself some Sunkissed Berry Lemonade. You know what? Whatever your beverage of choice, folks, drink it. You're going to need it. Oh, my God. Uh, before I get to anything else, thank you very much for to Mike Shell, uh, who resubscribed to Tier 1. Uh, I believe uh, this marks a four-year anniversary of dropping the WWE Network for supporting truly quality programming. And surprisingly, if you just do Tier 1 and not Prime, we are cheaper. And we provide better quality entertainment than Vince McMahon is currently doing right now. And that, that is a good thing. It's a very good thing. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, as um, as we, we are uh, want to do on Thursdays, we did Riff Zone. We were, uh, I was uh, as uh, not in a good mood, to say the least. So first things first, T-Dub, I apologize for that. When you're on edge after... Seeing every goddamn thing happening, good lord, good lord, I was not, I was not in the mood to riff. But feel a little better, a little bit, not much better. Feel like screaming. Pretty sure T Dub's ready to scream what the fuck a couple of times. Maybe. Also, what's it to you? What's it to me? Yeah, sound like one of them wise guys. Gotta know everything. Well, I don't know about about knowing everything, but I know something. He's back. As advertised on Rift Zone, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Shin Tiger Curl. Now hold up. If we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this right. Uh huh. Coming in, hailing from Houston, Texas, Aldine. North side, weighing in at 205 pounds, representing Forest Brook High School, Dubrook, repping it for his homeboy, Diamond Ice, repping it for his homeboy in Philadelphia, slinging sandwiches, Mike Rappo, representing that RVT gang all fucking day. He is the man. He is the king. He is the god of this fucking shit. Shin Tiger Carl. Lord knows how much I want to do for whom the bell tolls right fucking now. Yeah, very nice <laughs> Emma impression, sir. I try. And sh and and Karjik, he says, Matty, in less than an hour, scramping. Who gives a fuck? My fucking show. Plus, I got the phone. You you know I can watch it live, right? No, you you're not allowed to watch it live. You have to wait till afterwards, Matty. Got it on the. CJ said so. No, he didn't. You did. Fuck you. Anyway, see, not in that mood. 
Oh, I got, I got TSN Direct. I will be fine for watching Rampage. Don't you worry about me. Yes. I'll be fine. Also, welcome back, Shen. Thank you, thank you. It's 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 unfortunate back. it took Keith Lee getting sacked to get you back, but Jesus, let's get you know what? Let's let's grip it and rip it. Here's what's going on tonight. We got the winners and losers. We got some news. We got a clip of the week. But before we get anything else, one uh, episode five ninety six. The name extreme was asking about it. 596 episodes of this. Four more episodes, and then we hit the big six. Double O! Almost half the length of One Piece. <laughs> hey, I'll take that as a compliment any day. Uh, we'll talk about the rest of the stuff, but before we hit the clip of the week, which obviously is CM Punk, if you don't know me, you don't do not know me. And don't worry about me missing pipe bombs. Believe me, I, even I, I got it on the phone. And it's going to suck that I'm not going to hear it because copyright stuff, of course. But I can still watch it later. So you can yes. stop telling me it's going live at 10. I don't give a fuck. I got this show, and that's it. I just want to have my show. All right, move it. We might move it to 8 to please some of you marks. But nothing's done yet, and he's this guy over there from Texas just came back. Don't want to pressure him into say something he he don't know it's gonna happen yet. By the way, we we might move to eight Eastern just to please the rampage marks. <laughs> Sorry, I heard. Might yes, I heard. That being said, if we could be serious for a minute. Seriously, <sighs> I'm still in the bad mood over this shit. Here's a list of people WWE released in their uh, what will seem to be. A regular basis now. Uh, this is this is released. Uh, this was first confirmed by Sean Ross Sapp, but this has been uh, double confirmed by Brian Alvarez, Frankie Monet, Amber Moon, yeah, Jesse uh, Jesse Kamea, Katrina Cortez, Jeet Rama, Oni Lorkin, Tra Trey Baxter, Zeta Ramier, Scarlett Bordeaux, Bfab, Grand Metalik and Lizzie Dorado, Karrion Cross, Harry Smith, yeah. Yeah. Bet you didn't know he was back. He was. And he's not anymore. Nia Jax, Eva Marie. Yay. Keith Lee and Mia Yim. Fuck. All released. Reportedly do the budget cuts. That's what they say. Now, there have been reports. I believe uh, with uh, Grand Metalik, did he? I uh, believe no, it was Grand Metalik who said, "You're not using me, cut me," and it just coincides with the budget cuts thing. So, freedom in 90 days for him. But everyone else, uh, Nia Jax, obviously, there's rumblings and grumblings about this, this, and that. But it's all budget cuts, reportedly, and with the underlining of some people just flat out did not want to take the vaccine. Now, this is rumored and i personally i'm like yeah sure i'm just gonna go with the budget cuts because at this point that's fuck them just fuck them also yeah. as we know that trey baxter is better known to wrestling fans as blake christian as seen on impact wrestling he'll be back there for sure but hey biff busick's coming back in 90 days motherfuckers <laughs> i don't wait 30 throw him up 30 throw him up Throw him up. Throw him up. Throw him up. If he goes to AEW, they can afford bro him. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have to use the knockoff anymore. There's a part of me now. There, there is now a part of me that wants this to happen now. God damn you, T-Dub. <laughs> one person who, if they only need one, if only one person out of this entire list can go to AEW, only one person it has to be Keith Lee. Yeah. I, I, th I think that's the obvious one. Some people are saying, well, all of them, all of them, the AEW confirm. It's like, okay. If there's a dude in that list that, that definitely would fit right off the bat in AEW, that would be Keith Lee. Though, I will say this. Uh, Mia Yim definitely would be a great fit in AEW as well. Yeah, Mia Yim, Taya Valkyrie. Yeah. 
De definitely, Taya. Yeah, she is <sighs> poorly misused, but she is amazing in the ring. She's amazing in the ring. She's amazing on the mic. She's got great presence. I'm surprised she used release because she's everything that you think Vince would want. She's she's got she's a guy fit figure. She's blonde. What more does Vince want? Come on, I thought that was his thing. Ah, this yep. makes no sense. Stupid Nick Khan. And, 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 and wait, wait, Nick Khan, no relation to Tony Khan. Let's let's get the gag going yeah, for you. God's sake. Thank you. Uh, no, name. you know what's, you know who I feel, I feel who I, I think should be livid right now. Morrison. Yeah, he, he signed, lost it. and I'm fairly certain he said, "If I'm going, so is Taya. She's Taya, gone if now." I if I remember correctly, Taya is the shortest tenured person in that entire list. Like she just debuted this year on NXT. She did. She did. So that's the scab. Even... Go ahead. I'll say it's either her or Harry Smith. Yeah, but Taya, Taya had TV matches. All Harry Smith had was the one dark match. I can. I almost completely forgot he was with with the E now. Well, he I was, know, right? He was with the e. And of course, Ember Moon should would be, or uh, Athena should have a good should be a good fit in AEW as well as Dynamic like Extreme brought up. Oh yeah, the return of the War Goddess Athena. She could go to AEW. Athena. She could go to Impact. She could, you know, go to various independent scenes. Absolutely. But the one thing that's worrying me about this is, so in January there's going to be an influx of talent from Ring of Honor into the world, and then a month later from WWE. The wrestling world is about to get really flooded, and there's only so many spaces. Yeah. So right now, so right now, TK needs to really pick and choose who he wants on his roster. Very much agree with that because there's only so many spots in every promotion. He, no matter how much money you have, when it comes to TV time, that is the most limited commodity of all. There's and only you've got three hours. Time. You could say you could expand dark and dark elevation all you want, but. Some of them will command TV time more than others. Yeah, you just you can't put everyone on dark and dark elevation. There are some where you're you can't you're going to need to put some of them on TV, and TV time is so very limited just by the roster they have now. So he is going to have to pick and choose who he wants out of who's coming out of Ring of Honor and who's coming out of WWE. And JC had the best is is has the best way. There's a list that that's been floating around on Twitter today. Of every release from uh, after Mania up until now, you could seriously start a promotion with that level of talent. The amount of talent there. You could have a promotion with serious main event talent and a solid, a, a more than solid mid card and prospects for the future right on that list of people just released. Yeah, Tell no, me I'm no. wrong. Yeah, when you have to think about it that way, it's just. It really shows you how much they were stockpiling people and just WWE was just signing people just for the sake of having them so no one else could have them. And when this happens, eventually that balloon is going to burst and it's just going to cause a lot of problems. Yeah. And the, and the crazy part? I have no crazy. You know what the crazy part is? You yeah, know he's on the list. And in normal circumstances, I'd be hitting the na-na-na-na button. I'm not. No. I don't think she deserves that. She doesn't deserve anything. Well, yeah. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> well, maybe, maybe good. another shot at Big Brother celebrity fuckers, but you know. And Sayla in the chat makes a good point. If you get rid of all the mid carters, what's going to happen when the main eventers aren't available? Like, what would happen to WWE right now if Roman Reigns came down with an injury? What would they do? They would yeah, panic. Exactly. Yeah, because they have not built up any. Start new That's stars the big problem. A year ago, they had a stockpile of stars you could slot in immediately. Yeah. Not anymore. They said bye bye. They claim they claimed to be younger, but I'm like, you can't push Bra Bra Braun Breaker to the main event of WrestleMania in a year. You can't. No. I and Technically, Brian Alvarez you... brought up the, the this brought this up on his show today where you see he went. Okay, here's the, here's the thing. We're gonna bring you in, and in six months, if you approve, we keep you. If if you think in six months we in six months you're not doing anything, you're not pushing a needle, gone. Mm -hmm. 
So that's de- that they should not be getting that desperate. They should, but they currently are because they it seems that they have this really short attention span where if they don't see results immediately, there's the door. And not even that, it just that they had well people with well this experience, but you, you, because they smelled like Indy, oh, can't use this fuck. Keith Lee was a main event guy. Yeah. Yeah, he's somebody who was breaded ready just for that main event spot from the get-go. You could have easily, like, when he made his debut at the Rumble, Brock was like, ooh, big boy. And when you can impress Brock Lesnar, when you impress him by just showing up, that should have meant something. That should have been just immediately, okay, this guy is pegged for main events future. When right Brock Lesnar was putting his working shoes to put over Keith Lee, you should have kept them as was. But Vince yeah. wanted to fuck with the formula because he did not make them. And this is the thing that's going to kill WWE in the long run. Not, not the short-sightedness, not the budget cuts. The inability to just take something as is and letting it go and just giving that small guidance to make sure nothing gets, goes off the rails. Yep. Not overmanage every goddamn thing and then firing people who don't need to be fired. And especially if those people who are fired... Be, who are fired we're keeping the damn thing on the goddamn rails in the first fucking place. JD from New York, he's screaming to the top, and he's like, he's, he's, they have sabotaged Triple H's career because Vince didn't create NXT. He was right. I mean, there's there's been some, there have been several people who have noted that there's been a lot of Triple H centric cuts here where if Triple H signed them, they're gone. It's starting to feel that way. And they're just pretty much. And right now, the last remnants. Apparently had a dark match tonight. Johnny Gargano and Kyle O'Reilly had a dark match on SmackDown, and they're basically the last remnants of the original NXT. Yep. And both of them have contracts ending this year or early next year. No, it's in December. Last I heard. December. So yeah, December. In December, so they gone. And if their contract expires, there's no non-compete. Exactly. So we could we could probably see Red Dragon as early as January on on Rampage or Dynamite. And yeah, Sailor brings up how wonder how Triple H is taking this. I'm guessing that he's not taking this very well at all, which is not good because he just recently had a heart episode. He, he had that was not a heart episode. That was a broken fucking heart. This is not even a war anymore. No, this is not this is not even a war anymore. The wrong the wrong party won. It's like it's like a one side is came ready for a war and the other side is a bunch of crippled people who've been eating their own legs for sustenance because they can't because their government can't pay them. This is not a war. This is a mercy killing now. Pretty we're, much, AEW cannot do any more damage to a to WWE. They've done all the damage to themselves. Yeah, I guess all they have to it. do really is just keep uh, keep their momentum going, and eventually they'll just. Win by default. How can, fucking I, I sad is that, by the way, when that's the case? Where at AEW, all they got to do is find a network to be steady on, like TBS, whether the the, 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 the ratings loss for, for like the month and a half it's going to take. They'll have, a, have another banger session like they did back in September, and they're golden. And yeah, so I've been saying that for years, actually. The, actually, I, the first time I noticed this was like back in 2008, the similarities between WWE and WCW because, yeah, they have a really bloated law, roster and there was, even back then, they felt like there was too much WWE. But now, it's only gotten worse with three hours of Raw and then you got all these network shows and then you got this, you got that, you got NXT, NXT UK, you have all this stuff and it just feels so bloated and the rosters for the longest time were bloated and now it's starting to feel like these rosters are becoming a skeleton crew because all you're seeing on so many shows are rematches after rematches after rematches after rematches and all they gotta do is tell Vince hey here's a bunch of people we could literally put them together even in jobber fodder we'd be pissed off but it's fresh matches Mm -hmm. and you know you know who the biggest victim of all this is the talent? They're women's division. Oh, yeah, most absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. You, would yeah. think, have... you would think Ember Moon wasted, right? 
Frankie Mo Monet gone. Wasted. The women's division is a skeleton crew in, in, in the worst yeah. possible way. They have Tony Storm was... on SmackDown, but they barely ever use her. And Nia the Jax, yeah, ironically enough. Honestly, her, Nia Jax and, and Eva Marie were part of the problem of why the, the women's division has gone down so much lately. Because Nia Jax thinks that she can just get away with hurting other wrestlers just because she happens to be The Rock's cousin. And Eva Marie is basically the cheetah of, of women's professional wrestlers. By the way, for those wondering, yes, Shane is a little quiet. I'm trying to adjust things. It's a new computer. So I'm pretty sure it's, it's going to be a case of, uh, uh, of adjustments being made. Yeah. Even yeah, there, there you go. Up. Even there, that's a little better, actually. <laughs> yeah, Cardio yeah. Bros brings up that 205 was a skeleton crew. And at this point, 205 Live has turned into NXT Dark. 205 Live is not a skeleton crew. It is powdered dust. Pretty much. Yeah, Roddy Strong is the champion of a dead division. It seems like the they pretty much just eliminated so many people, and it's just like, okay, I guess whoever we feel like is a cruiser can now challenge for the title, whatever. That seems to be the mentality. Mm -hmm. And NXT UK but, is just, that's just, woof. I don't even know what to say about that other than they have good wrestlers, but nobody watching that show. Nobody's watching. Yep. Because people, because the reason to watch NXT UK was, oh, well, NXT was on the network. I mean, so watch NXT UK as well. Not anymore. NXT is a, is a bastardization of what it was back on, uh, back on USA Network for the money and the fuck over of AEW as well. But the money. I can, I can see almost everyone on that list finding some work except for Nia Jax and Eva Marie. You know, the, the crazy part is they were talking about uh, Nia Jax having met, uh, taken a mental break. You know, and Pardon I'm like, well, hey, I'm not, I'm not going to judge about it. You know, hey, there are plenty of people that I know around, including people in the wrestling industry. Case in point of the guy we're going to talk about after a clip of the week being played. Who are in need of a break. Part of me so, doesn't believe that. You know, it's one of those things I take it with a grain of salt no matter what. So, yeah. fair. But, hey, you know what? If that's true, fuck you, WWE again. Yeah, hopefully, uh, you know, Grand Metalik, or as he's known as Mascara Dorada, as well as Lince Dorado, they can both uh, find be better lucha things outside of this company. Outside of the country, yeah. when you technically think about it. Honestly, I can see some of these some of these gals and girls going to GCW. Oh, yeah, most definitely. I, mean, I think it's easy to say right now that right now GCW is number three in America. Oh, yeah, they've definitely been picking up the momentum this year. I can usually see Lindsay Dorado, Mia Yim, Keith Lee, Harry Smith. I'm not sure, like, B-Fab is just, I'm not sure what she's going to do because she's still, like, the greenest of the they green on here. They literally signed her a week ago to an extension so she could hang around on SmackDown. One week later, <laughs> bye, Felicia. What the fuck? Yeah, I, just, I didn't think they would kill, uh, kill that group already. Like now, who they have now? Dollar King. That group Bottom is dollar. dead. JD said it best when he called them shit row, shit row. I just I feel so bad because Hit Row seemed to be over. You know they had the good crowd reactions. They 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 had the potential to sell the moich. They, they could do the good things, and then uh, they got rid of B-Fab, and that's the beginning of the end, ladies and gentlemen, the beginning of and the then, end. Car Junkie and said it best. Harry Smith should re reunite with Archer. KES mofos. I, I, do oh, not hear any, I, do, I do not hear any argument against. Hey, we'll give Lance Archer some direction on AEW. Hell, yeah. Killer Elite Squad in AEW? Imagine the tag matches. They're hosses. How many host tag teams does AEW have? Oh, uh, they got Bear Country. That's about it, actually. Yeah. Yeah, they, they could use a nice they host could tag use team. A, they could they use a, another host tag team, yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. We're great minds, I guess. 
And yeah. Enigma wants to know how is Ricochet dodging the releases? Have you seen his? Have you seen him leap around? If they want to release him first, they have to catch him. <laughs> well, for one thing, yeah, and for another, he must be selling something well. Come on, goddammit, get down here! I want to fire him. No. God damn oh, it! Oh no! Ricochet. No. What? Ricochet might become their uh, their new JTG. <laughs> oh no! God damn it! Which means ten years from now, he's gonna put out a tweet saying, "What? I pick up my phone." Mother, I should please have should, him come. That is a fate worse than death if you're Ricochet. But God damn, it's gonna happen. <laughs> it's it, like if he's like they're saying every six months that it's gonna happen. I'm like, God damn, he should have been. Oh, MD Commissioner says he's going to be their other Dolph Ziggler. Ricochet actually had a match on SmackDown, says JC. Drew Claymore and him while he was upside down in the midair. He's probably being kept around for spots like that, in fairness. Yeah, they need it. He, he, he's basically become their spot monkey. I hope they pay him well. Yeah, I think he's kind of in the role of Shelton Benjamin was in for a while where, you know, he's super athletic. They have him come in, do some super, like, high-flying spots, and maybe get a little shine every now and again, but never above the lower mid-card. Also, speaking of Shelton Benjamin, I think he's the reason why uh, Mia Yim got fired. <laughs> Wait, what? Ha! <laughs> what? He still, hasn't, he still hasn't let, he still is angry about her about what she did. She didn't pay Kofi his money. Oh no, no, no. She she really she called him out of his name. Oh yeah. Yeah, that as well. He just passed by on each other and all of a sudden she's like, Hi Shelton and Shelton's like, What? What's wrong, Shelton? Bitch, what did you call me? Oh no. I said I said Shelton. I'm this close from slapping the shit out of you. why are you call why are you insulting me? All because she doesn't call him by his proper name. Shelton, Shelton Benjamin. Benjamin. Yeah, you got to say the whole thing. Shelton Benjamin. It's like a pimp named Slickback. You say the whole thing. Shelton Benjamin. Shelton Benjamin. And Sayla wants to ask, are we sure it's Vince doing these cuts and not someone else? Well, the way the no, process works. It's, it's been... still Nitcon with the insist of Bruce Fuck You Pritchard and Johnny Fuck Man Ace. Yeah, it's those three. They make a list. They send it to Vince, and Vince approves it. Yes. That's basically how that works, according to what we know so far about the inner workings. And also, they also apparently fired a an executive that's been around the company for over 15 years. Yep. I remember. And with, with the thought of, oh, God, this guy is leaving no one safe. Yeah, I mean, uh, apparently someone texted Sean Ross Sapp last month saying, if they got rid of Bray Wyatt and he was selling loads of merch, what does that make the rest of us? Yep. Unless your name is um, unless your name is Roman Reigns, everybody can get it. Everybody can die. Yeah. Yep. WWE, the modern horror flick, and like the Joe Bob rule of anybody can die at any time. That one's for you, easy. <laughs> Like we're not going to speculate yeah. where who where anywhere in lands. I mean, Ring of Honor is gone for God's sakes by the end of the year. Well, hopefully they'll, now, hopefully they'll return in the spring. Hopefully, one, one can only hope. Now I have this mental image of Vince McMahon in a hockey mask chasing people around like Jason, but instead of a machete, he has a pink slip. <laughs> Get shin. No, it's. No, 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 Chan, Chan, Chan. No, 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 Chan, Chan, Chan. <laughs> fire. You're fired. No, 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 this is Vince. He's subtle. It's a sledgehammer. You're fired. Gary. Sh -sh -sh stride him, stride him, stride him. Gary, Gary, Gary. Stride him, stride him. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> 12 billion of debt. What the fuck? Airball, I'm about to kick you if it's not wrestling related. 
He says Sinclair. Sinclair? What? Really? Source. Gotta give us a source, man. Because give me that, a source. If that's true. If that's true, then... Jesus. I just... Yeah, Ring of Honor is dead if that's the case. Fuck. No wonder they released everyone. That's... God, God damn it. Well, I guess they really are. I, I, now I'm almost certain they're selling that tape library. That tape library is going to be priceless. That tape library, no wonder they're going for a uh, for for uh, for for a for a price on that thing. Good lord! And 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 name of stream just sent me a DM. Let me get that uh, on to the chat room. All right, all right. There then. it is, yo. Thank you, Shin. Got it. And uh, here's the link, the proof. Uh, this is from Wrestling News Co. So obviously, this is a key, uh, 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 green assault territory here, but uh, this is true. Holy shit! Well, yeah, that's 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 no bueno. That no, that, that is no good. Now, just now, if that's true, then Sinclair had no choice. They held on as long as they could, and the minute it was safe to do so, they did it. Let's see. According to the financial results, they have twelve point five three zero billion dollars of net worth debt, and most of that, eight point one two four billion, is due to their streaming service, Diamond Sports Group LLC, that they have been working on launching. The company has also been reeling from a ransomware attack that has disrupted its local programming across the country. The attack has reportedly been linked to a Russian crime group. Fuck in hell. Same, I believe the same crime group that went after the website uh, for my local bus uh, transit company, too. Yeah. Ah, that's that sounds Russian familiar. Hackers. Yeah. Uh, I just... Uh, now I feel even worse for ROH. Yeah, because it's... It'll take a small miracle to bounce back from this. Jokov fought, and then you saw the bill, and you go... Just... Keep it till it's safe to fire them, you know, let, so they get more jobs. I think once the indie scene went, that's like, he fought more and then he could fight no more. Wow. Damn. Hairball wants yeah, to use his one on a Toku thing. I'm like, you, you know what? Go right ahead, bud. I, I, I think you've earned your, your, I think you've earned your one tonight. This that is... being said, uh, we got to move on because uh, we got some now, news. Time for time for a little little uh, happier thing. Happier thing. This is still a little bit of context. Contextually, it's still a little bit of bad news because obviously, always oh, pre-ordered zero one. That is some good news. That is some good news. I could not because I can't afford it, but you know, cruising and all that stuff. Which, by the way, fully paid off. So yay! Anyway. So CM Punk comes up, and I'm, I've cut it off from the Eddie Kingston part of the promo because I think the context is definitely it, it, uh, worth uh, bringing up. Uh, CM Punk comes out, and this is all in context. Uh, earlier the day before, uh, early, early, or no, late last night, early this morning, Tony Khan goes on Twitter and announces, uh, or before Dynamite, I should say, goes on Twitter, announces that John Moxley had entered, had voluntarily entered an alcohol assistance broke. Excuse me, combination. Our, our, a, an alcohol assistance program. It's an inpatient thing, so he's going to be in rehab essentially. Uh, he and he has been removed until such time. Basically, it was all voluntary and all that stuff. And uh, the first thing that needs to be said is a good on him, and b I hope and this it is a sincere hope, and I think I could speak to all, for all three of us. It is a sincere hope that he does get better, so we get a sober John Moxley can kick all the asses again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hopefully he can recover. And I'm wondering how much. And this is just pure speculation, but I'm wondering how much of his alcoholism has to do with deathmatch wrestling. I don't know. I mean, I didn't think my extreme. Like everyone buys his book. Jay Sherman, buy my book. Buy my book. Buy my book. Pow. <laughs> yeah, because the one thing I remember is uh, Renee. Paquette doing an interview saying that during one of his more recent uh, death matches, he came home and he was still bleeding out when he got home. 
Hmm. So well, he's been running himself ragged since he uh, since he jumped ship. So it, in it certain make, ways, it in a sense. good way, he's he's yeah. always been a busybody. But I yeah. think at this point, the but the body goes though says no more and goes. Well, booze ain't gonna help it, so let's help myself. Which yeah, again, you know, get well better and uh, no more deathmatch wrestling for a while. But I think. You've had your fill, obviously. Yeah. To context to what CM Punk did on Wednesday. And yes, it's another promo. And yes, it's CM Punk, but it's CM Punk cutting promo. I'll take it. Mm -hmm. And he had... I don't know if it'll be pro promo of the year, but it'll de definitely a promo that was certainly needed. Take a listen. the name I want to hear right now. There's no stage dives. I'm not particularly in the best mood. If I could talk to you guys seriously for a couple of minutes, I'd super appreciate it. There's two people who aren't here today, and one has a very legitimate reason as to not be here, and that's the name I want to hear chanted. His name is John Moxley. I'll spend all my time out here listening to you guys chant for him right now because it's important. It's important to me. I have some history with John Moxley. We're not super tight. We're not the best of friends. But, you know, last night I'm traveling here in a car. I got Larry riding shotgun and I get a phone call. And I have this situation explained to me. And I know what it's like to go and go and think you have to be so tough and better than everybody else and wrap up injuries and be sick and show up to work and do all these things that get compounded and help other people and be super generous and eventually get to a point where you have to take yourself off the hamster wheel. And I've been criticized for it. I don't want anybody to criticize John Moxley because I am goddamn proud of him. And I'll say one last thing about it. If anybody here, anybody at home watching on television, if you're in a place where you think you need help, get it, ask for it, reach out, text somebody, call somebody. There's nothing harder that you can do in the world, but there's nothing more courageous as well. There's nothing wrong with asking for help. Also ask if you're having a mental issue, you just you don't want help, but you just want a break. If you need help, get it, but if you just need a break, take it. Mm -hmm. That's what I did last year. Did wonders. Ish. Mm -hmm. Still nuts, but you know, can't help but that. Help but help. Cannot help that. Damn it, I can't fuck. She didn't help me with the jokes, please. I'm only one man. All I can say is that um I ha actually have a friend who is um, fighting a battle with the bottle, has been for years, mm. and it get it it can go to some dark places. So, and he still has problems with it. I, I wish I could help him more, but it it's hard to do when he when he doesn't really want to do what he's supposed to do. I'm not gonna name names or anything like that, but I know what Renee and everyone else must be going through. Knowing that, that knowing about what's going on with John, and but I'm proud of him for actually deciding to get the help he needs because asking for help when you know you got a problem is the hardest thing to do, especially if you're a man. Because in this day and age, men aren't supposed to be perceived as weak or have problems. We all.
always got to be strong. We always got to be this and this. We can't look like pussies and all this other stuff. So for a man with such physical toughness as John Moxley just breaking down and saying he needs help to and them giving it to him shows just what kind of man that um John Moxley is, what John Good is because apparently he's doing for his daughter, which is probably the best way to do it. If you're gonna do it, do it for yeah. the future. Yeah, he loves his daughter. Like he said in his last promo, he doesn't really care about titles anymore. He just wants to do good by his daughter. So props to him for doing it and props to um for for Phil Philip Brooks for um being real with us and 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 just sharing his stuff. He said he wasn't a friend of his, but he supports him in trying to get clean because we all if anybody knows Phil, his story, he knows his family's had problems with alcoholism and he is very If there was ever a person to cut a promo that acknowledges that this is an issue that is to be taken seriously, it is CM Punk. And yeah. especially uh, as this was like, he was supposedly, you know, about to be in the highest part of his life. I mean, his book just came out, was giving rare reviews. He's about to be part of this new big storyline. So this guy is walking away from a lot of stuff. And to do that, to get help, that that takes a lot. And, yeah, it, just, and, and Tony Khan acknowledging it and saying, hey, this is, this, is, this is what happened. We acknowledge it, we appreciate it, and we approve of this tells me that his career can be put on hold even if it is for a month or six months or even up to a year the first time you hear hear a wild thing again there will be a big fucking pop yeah. and it, it will be a good pop because people also, appreciate him or will be happy to see him back also um Je jesse from the off the script podcast said he has read john moxley's book he said it's the best wrestling book he's ever read since um, Foley's first book. Wow. wow. Some experts, excerpts here and there, and it's you can tell there's no ghostwriter. It's literally just thoughts from John Moxley's mind straight to the page, no filter. Yeah. It ain't and nothing then wrong with that. And then Vince Russo had to open his big stupid mouth. What the hell did he say now? He basically called Tony Khan a ghoul for using this to prop himself up, stating that he had no business um, airing John's dirty laundry out like that, even though the, the first, first sentence words of out the, of the tweet from Tony Khan was he was approved to do that. To Shin, I hate to cut you off, but you don't need to say another word about Vince Russo fucking up again. Oh, to quote my to quote hood nature, oh don't worry, it gets worse. He was uh, he was using it to promote his podcast, and when somebody asked him for his full thoughts, he says you can you can get it, bro, by paying thirteen dollars to my Patreon, bro, to get the full show, bro. Didn't think I was gonna do a fuck you segment. Thank you, Shin. Yeah. Pinterest of writing it down only. as we speak. Fuck this fucking fucker. I knew it would have to be something. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about that Tony Khan is the type of guy that also kept Brody Lee's illness a secret under, you know, his widow's and the whole family's, you know, want request. Wishes. Yeah. Yeah. The whole roster kept that thing a secret, a tight secret. Not one wrestler, not one production assistant, not one person working there said anything. So you know that if anything gets out of that company, it's by design. It's by permission. Yeah. Because there is a trust to it. You know, the trust that you lost decades ago and are trying to get back and failing every time by shilling a podcast that nobody listens to. A hey. podcast that you have to pay to listen to. Pay to listen to. Get out of here. You know the difference between me and Vince Russo? Yeah, the similarities like that. No one listens to my shit, but you know what? My shit's free. And more worth your time. That too. And you're more attractive. Oh, for, you know, <laughs> chest up, of course, you know. <laughs> yeah. Down there, shit show. Anyway. <laughs> Well, at least you have a better voice than Ventura, so I can say that much. God damn right I do. 
bro, <laughs> come what? Listen to my podcast, bro. It'll be great. It's the greatest podcast ever, bro, bro. If if he ever invites me on that show, I will just I will I will, you will, I will pretend you, to be. You'll be John Stewart on Crossfire. And no, if you I will understand just be, that reference. I'm old. <laughs> I'll just be Robert De Niro from Monkey and Apple. Who are you? How do you know me? Who are you? Who you know? Who are you? How do you know me? <laughs> what movie? What movie you seen? What, Dude, what matches have you seen? If you're gonna do it, name do me it, match. Do, do it. If you're gonna do it, make sure it's live. That way, he, that that way, that shit can go viral again. Nevertheless, uh, let's uh, talk about some AEW now. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, let's do that. Let's do that. No, no, no other big news. That's it. There's some other news, but I want to save it for later. Save the news for later. All right. All yeah. right. We're already, you know, we, we play the clip. Let's get into some AEW. Why not? Yep. And we start the evening off with Kenny Omega and Alan Angels having one hell of a match. Proves my point. Every member of the Dark Order can go. That yeah. is great. Stop. Yeah, there's not a true. bad, there's not a bad wrestler amongst the Dark Order. They're jokey, jokey a lot, but when it gets when it's time to do some wrestling, not a bad one in the entire lot. I think that's the point you can make about uh, practically everybody on that roster, including Jade Cargill, who is yes, is green, but improves every outing. Very He's green, but not beach. He's green, but not BFAB green. No, the, and BFAB BFAB still had uh, still had improvements too, but you know. There's a clear difference. Yeah. You're rewarded for your improvements, not cut because you're, you're on the main roster now and you're not good. What the fuck? Mm -hmm. it, yeah, this is a great match, a nice rematch from 18 months ago where a whole bunch of people got angry because Alan Angels was having his first AEW match and he looked strong against Kenny Omega. That made a lot of people angry. And... That is fun. I find that, and they played into that with this match. That was match kind of followed that, Mwah. including Alan Angels kicking out of the first V trigger. Anyway, still punch drunk, but hey, you you you, you know you you got it. Omega went no kick out. Really, you'll be fine. You'll be over. But I'm already after. Over. You'll be over again. Okay. Mm -hmm. Flat. And, and after Kenny won, he tried to. Give Alan Angels a one-winged angel through a chair, but the hangman interrupted, saved Mr. Angels, and held up the world title in a scene we could be seeing a week from tomorrow. Yes. And yes, full gear is just eight days away. Yep. No, actually, seven, seven, eight, less than eight days. Next Saturday. Yep. Which, by the Hopefully way, folks, we are going live at 9. It will be a short show because Rampage, like this week, will be live, of course. And hopefully my best friend can actually make it this time. Yes, go to AEW. Have a lot of fun. And, of course, uh, afterwards, we have that CM Punk promo that we discussed. Great yeah. stuff. I can have was discussing Eddie Kingston. He didn't like the fact that he was interrupted by him, but Eddie not in the arena that night, which made Steam Punk very angry. And they're going to have a confrontation in about uh, who knows how much time once Rampage starts. If I know anything about Tony Khan, they're going to try to fuck us over again by starting the goddamn show with it. <laughs> now they always start the show with matches. Always. Yeah. Are you sure about that? Yeah, that's always they always start their shows. That's how they differentiate themselves from WWE because WWE always starts with promos. AEW always starts with matches. That's how it's always well, been. Except, except for the night that CM Punk came back. Yeah, that was the exception. Case in you know, was, point. I know, but that was an exception because CM Punk's return was like the moment of the decade. Fair. We also had a nice backstage fight between the Super Click and Jurassic Express and Christian Cage, which ended with Christian Cage giving Adam Cole, baby, a concerto. All right, kayfabe? Oh, he did. And shoot, he must have been marking out taking that, uh, that, that fucking concerto. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I would. Yeah. He probably talked about it on his stream. <laughs> Don't surprise me. Would not, it, 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 I would, should not surprise us at all. 
And Good old Budge. Budge! Uh, there's also an in-ring promo with John Silver, where, of course, he said, this Friday night, it's not going to be all about the boom. It's going to be all about the budge. People were calling it awkward. It's like, y'all are, are not watching being the elite, and, it's sad, and it embarrasses us. Yeah, more people yes. try to be the elite because John Silver is a treasure. He is. He also, we watch Sammy's vlogs because Fuego is a treasure, as is Son of Fuego, Fuego 2. Yeah. And, and, and sure whoever did the Ghostbuster song deserves a Grammy. Mikey Ruckus. Yep. And he did it in under a, in like an hour from what I heard. Like 90 uh, minutes. Yeah, from start to finish, 90 minutes. He literally just got the call to do it. He, he, he barely sent the MP3 in like just a little bit after 8 p.m. So that guy works magic. He works fast. Indeed he does. Yes. And speaking of Del Sol, we had FTR defending the AAA tag team titles against Arrow star in Samurai Del Sol, formerly known as Kalisto. So I'm going to say this right now. Great to see Arrow star back on TV again. Mm hmm. He has been missed. Also, God damn, that was a near miss that almost fucked up his career. Good lord. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh. They don't call I, I, Sorry, go ahead. I, I got the feeling that that's, um, Aerostar was really trying hard to impress TK with this match. A little bit. Yeah. I get the feeling trying too hard. Possibly, but, you know, that, that is the high-risk the high risk style of high-flying, you know? It is called the high-rent district. Yep. No Brett's rope in that match. No. <laughs> And of yeah, course, there used to be the top rope being tighter than it was. It was a little loose for Lucha. And I think that Samurai Del Sol looks pretty well in this match, I'll say. And he's already more over in this one match than he was during the last year in WWE. Mike Shell poses a very, very pertinent question. Where the hell is Drago? Uh, that is a good question. Let's get Drago in there. Yeah. If we're going to go full Lucha Underground on a budget, well, actually, that's MLW. What are we talking about? Well, then, send Drago to MLW. Send him there. Yeah. Do that. Just Screw get, that. Get him on television. Screw that. I'm all, I'm, give me King Cuerno. Yo. No, he's already there. Wait, wait, what? He's already there in MLW. No, I mean the AEW. Oh, right. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's see, uh, what else we got here? Do, 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 do. Inner Circle for their matchup at AEW Full Gear. They chose Men of the Year. And, of course, from America Top Team, they chose Junior Dos Santos, Andre Arlovsky, and the man who claimed to be the number one member of American Top Team, Dan Lambert, as we predicted. The way he sold it. Good Lord. From badass to weasel in two seconds. Mwah! He's somewhere in... Somewhere in heaven, Bobby Heenan is smiling. And calling people humanoids. And probably giving, uh, giving Gorilla Monsoon another stroke, but y you know, the usual. Will you stop? <laughs> and of course, this match will be no disqualification, so expect a whole flurry of nonsensical interference and tomfoolery. Yeah, this is obviously to cover the inexperience of three out of the five dudes from the American Top Team. Though I will say this. There will be a time where Dan Lambert will be in a, in a Walls of Jericho. Now, I don't know if he will tap out or not. But he will be in that move. And people yep. will rejoice. And can we say phrasing to that girl from American Top Team? Oh, Paige yeah. Van Sant. A phrase so obvious that, that even Chris Jericho went, well, that joke writes itself. Yeah, like, you, someone should have warned Paige Van Sant that Chris Jericho has experience with, with uh, beautifully buxom women who look like sluts. Thanks a lot, Paige. You're the breast. I mean, the best. <laughs> And no, no, no worry, ladies and gentlemen. If 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 this show crash lands, well, we can use Paige Vance Ants to boobies as flotation devices. 
Okay, it's not full on rock, but you get the idea. Yep. <laughs> oh, but I will say this though. Like, the, actually, I will say this. You know, we we jest, obviously. Paige Van Sant for her first wrestling promo, not bad. She definitely yeah. has some charisma. And she's already cutting better promos than some of the other people we've seen on yeah. television. But yeah, so like you know, I'm like I'm like fair. Like look, like I was, like, I was watching uh, the the thing, and the first thought was, "Oh, here we go. This is gonna land on Botchamania." And then she opens her mouth, and then she goes, and we're like, "Oh, you know what? Fair enough. Okay, she 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 she's out of the she's out of the bullshit. She's good. Okay, fair, fair. She's been trained, but fair." And of course, the name of extreme with the. Uh, Obvious, filthy, dirty, disgusting, brutal, battle beating, flashback. Who? Yes, sir. And before we go on, speaking of ho, best of luck to Jim Duggan in his recovery. Yeah, he got the yep. surgery. He got the surgery. If what was it for? I forgot. It was a, no, it was not kidney failure. No. Uh, fuck, I forgot what it was as well. I know it was something serious though. It was serious, buddy. He is. Cancer? He is going. Sorry. Was it cancer? It might have been some form of cancer. I can't remember, but it was something serious. It was serious enough to, to warrant emergency surgery, but he is recovering. So, ho! Oh! Also, best of luck to Jim Ross recovering from his skin cancer. Yeah, that's the one with the skin cancer, and uh, yeah, but good luck to him. He'll he'll make it out. Hang in there, tough guys. <laughs> there you go. And speaking of tough people. Jamie Hayter defeated Anna Jay in a pretty good match, although some people seem to be not fond of the interference. <sighs> I'm guessing because it was a tournament match, they wanted more of a clean finish. And people forget heels. Straight up heels. Also, hello, Jamie Hayter. Would you like to be future ex-wife number 15? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Shin Tiger Curl, owner of his own virtual f harem. What? What about Jordan Grace? There, they, 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 they're Shin. She's future ex-wife number three. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, I'll you, say you that do know first. Jonathan Prashner is without, is without a contract now, right? He had sex, so he's going to die. He's an octopus. That's what happens to male octopuses. They have sex, then they die. But he's not... Ugh, forget it. Yeah, th that's a joke for, for Riff Zone anyway. Anyways, Jimmy Hader, Anna J, good match. Jimmy Hader won. She's moving on. Uh, they try to attack Anna J after the match. Ty Conti interrupted. Hype up their match at full gear. So full gear. It's going to be Ty Conti versus Britt Baker. AW Women's World title should be a fantastic contest. Yeah. Yep. And uh, JC with the obvious one, but best of luck to Dan Housen too, who had uh, there he actually showed they actually showed the uh, compound fracture, the, uh, the the crack in the leg, if you will. Yeah, before I read, it's a broken fibula and tibia. Unfortunately, so he's out for a while. Yeah, which means he's going to have to miss Ring of Honor's TV tapings and final battle. He's basically he is done with Ring of Honor, which fucking sucks because I feel like final battle could have been. Like his way to showcase to the wider world of wrestling, because there's going to be more eyeballs to Ring of Honor uh, during Final Battle than any other time. In the and past if there's anyone years. who deserved that spotlight, it was Dan Housen. But he is trying to make the best of it. He is trolling MJF on Twitter, and it, it, it is glorious. Yes, and he's also trying to get help from his best friend Dwayne, from his best friend Rock the Dwayne Johnson. That, that's Good how he him. does it too. Calls Chris Cristiano, Chris Judas. You know, he could probably pop up on this show. He'd call you the, the, the WWE killer. He could call you Maxicor and friends can fuck, and I'm Jay Maddie. I and we'd be this. on the floor laughing. He is quite the funny dude. Yeah. Somebody who will also try to be a bit funny, but to his downfall, try to be, I guess, more cute than funny, was MJF. A little bit. Try to be a little cute with barbs. But uh, unfortunately, when he tried to make his escape, who was there to stop him? Sting. It was Sting. It was Sting with a bunch of people. A bunch of people with uh, 
Yeah, a bunch of uh, masked men with paper masks. They chased him into the crowd where Darby was waiting, and they just proceeded to fight. And gotta tell you, Darby's running clothesline to from the inner part of the crowd to the outside of the ring area. Very nice. Looks very impactful. And that spot yep, fed into another happened. spot later in the night too. At least that's I. This feel is what happens happen. when you get two pillars in the when you makes sense when you get two pillars in the in, in a match like that. Yep. Also on watching Rampage, there's someone in the front row with a Vigilante Club shirt on, which is one of those limited edition Bullet Club shirts. Based oh, off of from uh, that's uh, that's uh, Stephen Amell. Yeah. Bow, I need to finish watching the first oh. season of Heels. I do too. I only watched like two like, episodes. I need, I need to, to watch up. that. Edit. It's quite decent. I've watched the first like I think four episodes. It's it's mm. quite good. I'm about to see it, of course, uh, because of the feed is on my phone and it's it's slightly delayed. But I I have the ability to watch it as I mentioned. Y'all have seen my setup. Oh but, yes. Uh, so yeah, yeah I'm Jeff and I Darby had nice, to do that now. Had nice back and forth fight. Good stuff there, and of course, an hour. <gasps> Orange Cassidy tried to fight Miro. He tried to defeat Miro, but Miro was working with the power of his god on his side, and he broke the back of Orange Cassidy. He made him humble. Made him tap out. T Dub, you forgot the uh, one thing. You, you, He's doing it for uh, the uh, d- d- Brian, you are a dick. <laughs> Wow. You are a dick. I was kind of, I was kind of in the zone. Why? I was kind of in my zone. What did he do? He went, he went over to Justin Roberts and adjusted his tie. <laughs> yup. <Yeah. laughs> you're, you're a dick, Daniel. You're a dick, Brian. You're a dick. <laughs> you're a dick, Brian Danielson. Oh, there we go. Now the intro's popping up on my end, so I'll be seeing that as well and reacting while we are doing the show, of course, because we are live and fucked SmackDown. Anyway, mm-hmm. uh, but. <laughs> There was a bit from uh, fri- from uh, Wednesday where he was like showing off his sudden mission moods on, and he's like he holding Justin Roberts' tie. You know, send the send the home la- send send the folks home happy. And that, that was a nice bow rap from Max Caster. Good on Ooh, it. All right, I will be oh. listening to that later, of course. Oh, I can so watch it, but like you know, again, you know. Oh, he's fighting Bowens. Good. Yep. Hey, W! The Acclaim has arrived! Pyro blowing shit up. Very nice. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, Miro destroyed Orange Castle. You know, OC tried. He tried, but, you know, Miro, he's got rage. Pure he's got rage. rage. He's got pure rage. He wants a belt back. He wants to be champion again. And he will do anything for the Nookie. The Nookie. He'll take you all the cookie and shove it up your ass. Shut up no, your ass. You know, take the cookie and shove it up your yeah! Shove it up your yeah! yeah. Shove it up your yeah! Oh, that's right. It's uh, Danielson versus uh, Owens. Owens. Oh, wait, this is a non turning match. Yeah. No, he's, he's in the finals. Yeah, he's, no, he's already in the finals. He's, he's solid. He's good. It's Miro versus Brian Danielson. Yep, it's a non turning match. Just an exhibition contest. This is a match to, to, to show, yeah. and that there's uh, there's a vigilante club shirt there. And you know, we keep going Jesse, with the news. You know, Jesse from Off the Script was right on Wednesday. Oh, what did he say on that day? He said that um, AEW's roster is a, is bloated in the right way because even though they <laughs> lost the biggest star in their company in the in the tournament. They were able to easily replace him with a worthy replacement with Miro. That, that's true. He said that at the very beginning of the show. I remember watching that. Now it's like that's absolutely perfect, and that's what you want out of your roster. That's what WWE should have right now, where anyone could be slot, where you could have five or six guys. Yeah, they might be misused. Yes, they might be more on dark than it be on, on uh, dynamite, more in more weeks than not, but. Something like John Moxley has to go for for a thing, or something. Someone, someone's legs get gets broken, or something. You could slot someone in easily, and just person the crowd with a book flip sign. AEW can book flip once he admits the Earth isn't flat. If he if he keeps saying if he if they sign him, and he keeps saying that shit. I think it's time for some more ribs. <laughs> Where do you think you're going? 
Also, I did, yeah, 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 Dan Bryant. I just, I've, uh, I had a chuckle because I actually saw him adjust the tie, which is classy. Yep. Very, very classy. Very nice. Very nice. So, hey, by the way, I have until five. <laughs> so, Anthony Bowens versus Brian Danielson. I am down with that one, actually. And there's some of the crowd, I believe, yeah. with an Eddie Guerrero is my favorite wrestler shirt. That is a wonderful shirt. Very vintage. That, that, is, a, that is a fan of class. Yeah, right in the second round. That is run. a classy man. Mm-hmm. And then Amos says Pac versus, Pac versus Danielson would be mwah. Of course, but hey, let's let's get the, yeah, we got we got a, we got a current crop of great wrestling matches. It would happen eventually, ladies and gentlemen. And speaking of great wrestling matches that will happen eventually, in my final bit of news tonight, just signed over the weekend to Impact Wrestling, none other than C Force Own Matty J. Speedball Mike Bailey. Folks, that news dropped. Ottawa, jaw, floor, big pop. I have friends and myself who went about fucking time. He liked that thing, by the way. I feel they wanted to sign him sooner, but, you know... Legal troubles. And for those wondering why it took so long, uh, he was supposed to show up for an Evolve show around the time of the Cruiserweight Classic. Uh, he was stopped at the border and banned from traveling to the States. Now, he was allowed back into the States, I think, about a year and a half ago, two years ago. But, of course, the pandemic kind of put a stick in the rails for a while. Yeah, so mm-hmm. because of that, it took even longer. But now he's JC found and thing. JC, JC. Apparently, he was a hair away from signing W F for uh, CWC. In fact, the show that Bailey was going to had William Regal, and they were indeed scouting for talent for the Cruiserweight Classic. So, yeah, he was indeed a hair away from being in front of what William Regal, which would have launched into Bailey being. Uh, let's not think about it. <laughs> Let's Boot not dodge. think about it and just say he dodged a big fat fucking bullet. Oh yes. Also, war games. <laughs> yeah, 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 war games. Fair, fair. Well, I heard a rumor that there could be takeovers in the future, maybe. Yeah, but yeah, it's still a maybe. That right now nothing's fucking scheduled. There better be because I need my war games fix. But then again, if I want war games, AEW's got war games. GCW's got war games. MLW's got war games. And GCW's got war games where it actually is fucking war. Yeah, they got glass, they got light tubes, they got barbed wire, all that fancy stuff. We need more Legos. I'm going to say, more Legos. Hey, maybe Speedball can introduce Legos on Impact. Maybe. Uh, Does he still wrestle barefoot? He does. Good on him. For those wondering, his wrestling gear is uh, a karate gi and kick pads, but no boots. Yeah, basically, it's uh, he, it's martial arts gimmick. He did, uh, and it's, shoot, he has actual uh, black belts in, in certain martial arts. I cannot tell you on the top of my head. You'll have to Google it yourself, but he is, legitimate, he is a legitimate black belt. I just wish the Impact yep. could afford his entrance music. For those who don't know, it's Brass Monkey by the Beastie Boys. One day, nice. Speedball Mike Bailey will make his way to AEW with Brass Monkey, and I will rejoice. Or, you know, at least mark, it the, or mark the fuck out. Yeah. Let's, well, let's see, just uh, be glad they can uh, actually afford signing a guy like Mike, Mike Bailey on, uh, on the show. Let's be honest. Right, I'll, I'll take Speedball Mike Bailey on, on, on Impact on Rift Zone any day of the week. Oh, hell yeah. And JC says, speaking of pay-per-views, apparently there's been no mention of Survivor Series on WWE TV yet. No plugs at all, which is... Whoa. Considering the fact that WWE can't help but plug their pay-per-views literally every single segment, like, they have their announcers going like, oh, don't forget our network special, the next segment, don't forget the network special, then the next segment, they just do that over and over again. And there's a graphic, the there, there's, a, there's a graphic, there's a thing. Yeah. A lot of stuff. That is surprising. Mm-hmm. Shocking. Also, Anthony Bowens and, Dan Br- and Brian Danielson are having a match up 
out there. It looks like the crowd's hot for it. Oh, hell yeah. Very and nice. somebody wants to give this match a golden up. Ooh. Nice. Very nice. I, uh, I, I understood got, that reference. I got some news. All right, sure. what you got, Mr. Shin? All right, um, first and foremost, next week is going to be some good stuff as as House of Glory makes its pay-per-view return next week. Oh, yes, the show featuring JD from New York and the Soul Monster on commentary. Yep, and That's they'll be calling the And he expressed his excitement for not only working with Solo Monster, but also for the match they'll be calling. Amazing Red versus Will Ospreay. That's going to be like, if you're there, if you got a ticket, you are fucking lucky. Yep. By the way, I am on the Wikipedia page for Survivor Series 2020 Uno, or I will be in about a few minutes. November 21, 2021 is, is a date. And as of right now, the page has no matches booked. No, nothing's been announced. Nothing's on the wiki. Well, here's hoping that starting Monday they'll start to get their act in order because, oh boy, I'm just, okay, I'm wondering, how many release people were supposed to be on that card? All of them. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, dollars to Donuts, both Karrion Cross and Keith Lee were supposed to be in there in one of them Survivor Series teams. And now they're like, well, what were you we supposed to plug now? We'll figure it out later. We'll do it live. Damn it. We'll do and, it live. Uh, oh. Fuck it. Also, um, we also, of course, another week, another Friday. So you know what that means? Another, another G, another new Legacy Inc. WGGP World Title Match. Oh, that was a good one. It was a good one tonight. It was a, that was the craziest WGGP title match I have ever seen. Interference out the wazoo. So they were playing No Mercy. No Revenge. Oh. Jer Jericho versus <laughs> versus Raisin. Raven. That's what I said, Raisin. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, you know what? I'm anything for the funny at this point, T-Dub. And, and, and I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. And of course, there was, a, there was a heavy emphasis on the most dangerous move in WGGP history. The move that gave Jericho his title win last week against Taz. The drop toe hold. That was it. It was a hardcore match, and he beat Taz with a drop toe hold. And now every time someone hit it, this the comments, uh, John and Slip just started marking out. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see one of Jericho's new moves that John Blood christened, and it's an underhook. It's an underhook into a um, spine bust, into a spine to a backbreaker, but he calls it, I'm from Winnipeg, you idiot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's the, I'm from Winnipeg, you idiot. Versus Jericho, WGGP title. Watch that shit. It is awesome. We're losing frames tonight. I don't know why. Rana was reset, but hey, for those of you who that, yeah, you heard, you heard right. All right. Got a little bit of news. A, a shout out to MJF, uh, who, uh, by the way, you know that line where he said, I could beat you with a head, the side headlock or something like that? And actually, that match happened in the Indies, and that was the finish. But it was, it was, uh, it was Darby who had that finish. He won the match with that. Oh, wow, nice shout-out. There's a tweet about it somewhere, so that's a deep cut. That I, that obviously, a whole lot of people did not get. It just took it for what it was, heel heat for heel heat's sake. But, hey, that's what it is. All right, well, I got a little bit of news, and it's outside of the realm of whatever. You might have heard of something. It's the first time I'm going public with it. My cruise is fully paid. Yay! Yeah, I am going so by a beautiful bell lock to finish the matchup, by the way. Uh, yeah, I'm going on Oasis of the Seas in February 2022. Uh, whether there is a Russell cast or not, um, look, the way WWE does its... Uh, his uh, his thing, they, you know, they do their release thing and all that stuff. I'm gonna hold off of saying there will be a Russell Cost or not, but if there needs to be, I will have uh, Shades prepare something because uh, just in case. 
Also, Cody got belted by uh, FTR. I don't know if we mentioned that or not. Just saw the replay of that, by the way. Oh, yeah. Cody and Andrade did have a match. It was pretty good. Yes. And Cody got... Yeah. Cody was doing a dive on the outside, and all of a sudden, bell shot out of nowhere. Da, 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 da. I, was, I was hoping to bring that up, uh, but it was uh, we, 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 we'd forgotten. Um, yeah, let's do winners and losers, boys. And uh, D cells and FU buns and all that good stuff. Shin? You may fire uh, when ready. Thank you, Grand Marf Tarkin. Obvious loser is the obvious one. WWE for releasing all that great talent. And Nia Jax and Eva Marie. They'll do something or other. Probably nothing related to wrestling because they're not very good. But anyway, <laughs> all this wrestling and they are just shooting themselves in the foot thinking they're doing better. I don't care what the ratings are doing. In the long term, they are fucked themselves over with this shit. So they get a D-Cell Battery Award. And the second D-Cell Battery Award goes to Vince Russo for you for trying to start some shit so that people won't buy into his stupid little podcast. Like, look, Vince, nobody cares about you. And for one, don't speak for John Moxley or his wife. They gave him permission. You're just too stupid to read. You need to be slapped, bro. As for oh, my nice. other losers, this was a loser that I... This is the one I've been saving for weeks and weeks. Ooh. Booker T. Oh, we know exactly why. Rant away. <laughs> a few weeks ago, he appeared on a podcast and talked about Keith Lee and pretty much said that he could never be a main eventer because he kept calling in sick. I'm like, you do know that he almost died, right? And the way Booker T said it was like, if you're a champion, you're not allowed to be human. You can't call in sick. You can't be injured. You can't take time off if somebody in a member of your family is. You just have to work. And that is such a fucking company line that it made me want to gag. And I'm like, you do know somebody else did that a few years back. I don't know. You might not remember his name, but he was a little guy known as Roman Reigns. He vacated the world title to fight leukemia. He left the WWE, left, he took time off because he was scared of the, of, the, of the coronavirus and their shitty handling of it because he has a compromised immune system. You remember that, Booker? Oh, of course not. You don't do any research because you call what happened to Keith Lee an injury instead of him getting fucking COVID, you ignorant slut. And on top of hey, that, hey, book, book, you got a little something. It's called co it's Vince McMahon's cock on your mouth. And not only that, but Roman also has... Two girls, right? So yep. I think he yes. wants to keep them safe. Yep. And contrary to what Grade A under A says, the, this, the, the virus needed to be taken seriously because it is deadly. It's killed four. It's killed four. Oh. By the so, way, and it you, nearly you, killed you, Keith you might, this year, that. So. you might want to repeat that because you got cut off by internet there. On my internet, by the way. Repeat the people. Four and a half killed. million people. There you go. Four and a half million people. Louder for the people in the goddamn them. back. Four and a half million people. One of which, my aunt. So yeah, Booker T, fuck right off, will you? And I'm done. Mr. Dub. Well, don't think my loser list can top that, so I'll just say... Vince McMahon, Johnny Ace, Nick Khan, Bruce Pritchard, and anyone else who's involved in releasing all those people. Nick Khan, no relation to Tony Khan. The fuck you button goes to Vince Russo for all the obvious reasons. Vince Jr. and WWE for fucking up on Karrion Cross and Keith Lee and everybody else. And if you want to if you want to lump in Nia Jax and Eva Marie, go right the fuck ahead. I'm not, so I'm just gonna go to the winners. And go to, to uh, Shin Tiger Curl for those winners. Obvious winner, AEW, for putting on a great show. Uh, John Moxley for having the guts to go and, and, get, and try to get some help for himself. Because if he needs it, he needs it. Yep. Uh, Miro for making it to the finals of the tournament as an alternate. Should be a great match. This promo that's about to go down between Eddie Kingston and CM Punk... <laughs> And 
uh, and whoever else you guys think should be a winner. I can't really think. Fair enough. Teed up. Teed up. I'm just going to get my one right now to CM Punk for the excellent promo he's cutting. Like, wow. Fair. Uh, Mike ba Speedball Mike Bailey gets a winner. The first winner, the only winner that should be, but obviously AEW and John Moxley throw in there as well. Uh, I'm going to simply say, uh, I'm going to do the quick plugs because I know you guys want to watch a promo. And right now I'm on the Rampage commercial page, so I got about 30 seconds to plug everybody. So you two relax. YouTube.com slash Max, Max Acorn for you for Shintar Girl stuff when he eventually comes back. TWK of TWK Reviews. Patreon.com slash TWK Reviews. He is also on TWK uh, Review stuff on his YouTube. I don't know when the new video comes up or not, but it will come up eventually. Just post it in the Twitch chat right there and try to Drake's fortune. Uh, should be a good one. I, I'll watch it, of course, later. And, of course, Twitter, MattyJ316, TWK Official, at Shintar Curl. Uh, on TikTok at magic.bc, I am taking a break from uh, the promo stuff, so I'll be doing some extra stuff, all that good stuff. PayPal out of me slash magic316 and all that good stuff. We're done here. I'm going to say this. Thank you very so much for saying hi and, uh, and doing all that good stuff. We much, much appreciates it. On behalf of everybody, including Shin Tiger Curl. This promo is fire. That is all. And TWK. Eddie Kingston is also killing it. Jesus Christ, this guy's a god. I, I have I have one headphone off because I'm about to listen to Punk. He finished his promo here. Manager, remind you of professional wrestling sports independent promotion as soon as possible. Have a good one. Have a safe one. Enjoy this promo. And oh God, man, I, I, Eddie Kingston's coming out. I'm gonna shut up now. Bye, everybody. Bye. you a question Johnny Funk man did you personally face to face fire Vladimir Kozlov on Friday huh did you did you fly yourself to Florida to tell Harry Smith yes his name is Harry not David Hart Smith that he was no longer needed here huh did you tell Chris Masters Somebody who over the past year has worked his ass off to get better. Did you fire him face to face or did you call him up and say, Hey kid, it's a budget thing. Best of luck in your future endeavors. Don't call me gutless.